Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fourth live webinar from Workplace Pride in our Keeping Members Connected series of webinars. We're very happy uh, this week to have uh, book, ha have it hosted by Booking.com, and the theme of the uh, of the webinar is Work Hard and Be Proud. So uh, Booking.com will talk about their network, their global chair, and the co-chair Milo Converi and Yasmin Palms will, will share their vision on this journey so far. So let me give the floor over to uh, Jasmine and uh, Milo. Yes, thank you, David. Um, and thank you, Workplace Pride, for having us today here uh, with you all. We're very happy to be here. Um, as David mentioned, my name is Yasmin. I'm here with Milo. Hi, Milo. So as David mentioned, we are from Be Proud, which is the LGBTQ plus network at Booking.com. Um, currently, our network consists of 2,700 members uh, and allies all over the globe. Um, I think there is hardly any office worldwide where we don't have an, an ambassador or at least someone that belongs to the network, which is something that we're actually really, really proud of. Um, currently, we have 17 local networks or chapters, which basically means uh, a group of people that get together regularly to um, either um, yeah, support our cause or maybe uh, host events, stuff like that. Uh, it wasn't always like this. So maybe we can uh, elaborate a little bit more on how we got here today. So it all began in 2015, uh, where Booking hosted a hackathon. For those of you who are not familiar with the concept, a hackathon is an event where basically employees can focus on uh, one of their own projects. So it doesn't have to be something within your core role. It can be something that you're just passionate about. Uh, and some employees came together that day and realized Booking is such a great, open, proud place to work. Um, so how can we give some more attention to that? Uh, and it, they ended up designing a sticker. You can see it on the slide. Um, and somehow that sticker, it really caught on. Uh, I think it resonated with a lot of people, the message. So nowadays, when you walk through the office, there is hardly any laptop you can find with not a sticker on it, which is really great, I think. Um, however, it wasn't just a sticker. I think when it also really took off was when we introduced Workplace. Workplace is uh, an internal version of Facebook, basically. Uh, a blessing and a curse, we, uh, we always joke internally. But one of the great things about Facebook um, is that it gives a lot of visibility to uh, yeah, whatever you want to give visibility to. And be proud is something that really, yeah, I think resonated with people, hence also the, the local chapters that came into life. Um, also, a little bit more history, in 2015, we started uh, or we joined Workplace Pride. Um, after that, the year after, we uh, participated in the Camel Pride in Amsterdam for the first time. Also, I think a great milestone. Um, however, we also realized that maybe there's also a lot of work to be done internally. Um, so how can we host an event that gives a bit more uh, awareness to our causes, which why, uh, is why in 2017 we hosted our first internal Pride Day, um, which this year even grew into a Pride Week, about which uh, I think Milo is going to elaborate a little bit more later. So for those of you who know anything about booking, um, they know it's not the most structured place on earth, um, to say the least. So it's funny maybe to, to also share this with you and it might uh, sound familiar to other people who are in an ERG. It kind of grew organically over the years, uh, also with the help of Workplace, but also because a lot of people I think are really passionate about this cause. So then a few years into the whole equation, uh, we came together as ambassadors, so as, as board basically, and realized, have we ever put anything on paper? And we realized we really hadn't. Um, so actually the mission and the vision that is on the slide is something we actually came up pretty recently with, not because we were working towards a different goal in the past, but more yeah, because we never really put it on paper. So anyways, currently we've um, voiced it like this, that we want to make Booking.com the number one place to work for all LGBTQ plus individuals in the world. Um, and the vision, uh, maintaining a culture of openness, inclusion and acceptance of the LGBTQ plus uh, community within Booking.com which allows every single employee all around the world to thrive in a place where they can feel welcomed, valued, and do their best work. Um, and this is still, yeah, this really guides, I think, uh, all the work that we do. So what is that work? I hear you ask, Milo. Um, cool, so let's move a little further into that. Um, you kind of hear 
people were saying a lot that companies have a very inclusive and diverse culture. And it's something that I hear a lot about booking. And I also experienced it firsthand when I joined the company. Um, I moved here at the start of 2017 from Manchester, uh, which in my opinion is the gayest city in the UK. Sorry, Brighton, but I would say that. And I worked for some fairly big companies. And I never even saw a breath of any form of LGBTQ plus community. It wasn't even something that was on my radar because it's just, just had no visibility at all. So when I joined Booking and I went on Workplace and I saw the Be Proud group, like I was really taken aback by this, that there was actually, let alone some visibility, but a platform for so many people to come together and kind of share discussions, tips, you know, places to travel, talk about drag race, anything. And it was really astounding to me. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, this is definitely a company that I want to work for. And we also get a lot of feedback that Be Proud is the reason that people kind of join the company and they want to stay here because it gives you such a feeling of like inclusion um, within the company. So I wanted to talk a bit about the ways that we've tried to improve the culture through Be Proud. Um, as, Jan, as Jasmin mentioned in the previous slide, we entered the Amsterdam Canal Parade in 2016, and you may have noticed our absence in that since then. And this is because we decided to use our energy, our efforts, and also our budget into something that could include all our employees around the world. So we started to host an internal Pride Day, which is completely separate from anything external, and we have one day a year where we really celebrate this in every office around the world. And it's a huge celebration. And it's not just our offices, but also our outsource partners also like to get involved in this. Um, we've shared a few pictures on this slide, as you can see here. We love to decorate our offices in rainbows and unicorns and cakes and everything. And yes, whilst that is an important part of the message, because this is something that we love, we really feel the need to, or well, it's not even a need, it's important that we share the reasons why we have pride and the educational aspect around this. Um, so different years, we try and host different things where we share like knowledge sharing information on different screens. We have things in booking called BKXs, which I only learned the meaning of last week is a booking knowledge exchange where we can bring external speakers into the company and we get LGBTQ plus specialists to come in and talk about their topics. Um, Historically, we've always hosted these in Amsterdam because we only had the facilities to do it here. However, last year was the first time we were able to branch out and actually host these in different offices around the world. So we had one in Singapore and one in Manchester. And without bragging to the rest of the company, the one in Manchester was the most watched BKX in the history of booking. And that was by John Meiji. And that was a super powerful talk. I really enjoyed that. It was, it was a really good talk. Um, not only do we do this, we have all of our uh, leadership team around the company getting involved. If you are part of an ERG, you probably know that a crucial role in this is chasing down leadership team members, asking them for favors, asking them to share communications and things like that. And this is exactly what we do for Pride Day. And a great example of how involved our leadership team are is we created a post for Workplace and we took it to all the leadership teams, all the regional directors, and we asked them to share our post. And the, um, the leadership team from America came back to us and they said, oh, no, sorry, this post is not enough. We want to do something more of this. So they actually traveled from Grand Rapids to New York and they stood outside the Stonewall Inn in New York and they filmed their own video and they talked about the importance of Pride and why we have this in booking. And it was just such an incredible message to see. I think that resonates so so nicely as well, because we live here in Amsterdam or in Europe, per se, and we live in generally more tolerant and open countries. So to have representation of that all around the world is such a huge message, especially coming from the top of the business. Another example of the impact that we had of Pride Day was last year, our office in Bali transformed their local office into an LGBTQ plus paradise. And um, it was really amazing to see. They, they filmed a video and everyone in that whole office got involved. And it was such a powerful video to put across. Like it actually made me quite emotional watching it. It's, it's a really good video. And this is where, and as I mentioned before, we now have representation in most of the offices. And this was actually at a point where we had no one in the Bali office representing Be Proud. So they felt the inclusive environment that was being created and, and they did this off their own backs. 
And so that was such a strong message to put across to the rest of booking. Obviously, hosting these kind of celebrations with such a global scope doesn't come without its share of constructive criticism, let's say. And we've had feedback in the past about why we don't host a straight pride or why we why we're pushing it in so many people's faces, pushing our agenda, um, why we're not supporting more minority groups. So we really try and take that feedback on board and each year try and build upon the educational and knowledge sharing aspect of it. And this year, evidently, we are transferring this onto a uh, online pride as we won't be able to be together in the offices. But we're really, before we were planning before COVID-19 here, and we're still going forward with this, is that we're focusing on educating and learning for employees and managers. So we're building the strategy around it as why Pride, why Pride actually exists and why this still happens. But we're also collaborating with internal teams and we're creating our own learning pathways. And this will allow managers, people managers, and hopefully employees in the future to be able to take these uh, learnings and trainings that uh, create them into becoming a more inclusive manager. And this should show employees coming into the company that their manager has actually gone the extra step to take some form of inclusion awareness. And it, it gives them that feeling of acceptance within the team. Nice. So another day that we celebrate within booking is coming out day. As we said, we have Workplace and Workplace is an incredible platform because it gives us this global platform that everyone in booking can come to and they can kind of share their stories, share tips. And we've also had um, examples of people using Workplace as a platform to come out to the rest of the company. And this is amazing to see in a company. I, I never thought that it was possible for one person to be able to do this or for the business to be able to give someone a platform. So we thought it was important that we acknowledge Coming Out Day. And every year we ask people to come and share their coming out stories whether it be in work or in their personal life. And they do it and they come and these, you can see on the screen now, these are just a few short clippings and some of the stories that we took, but they really provide detailed accounts and they provide their pictures and their names and the office and countries that they're in. And we kind of share these uh, around all of the screens and all of the booking offices for people to see. Because not only is it a celebration in that aspect, but it's also trying to give the light to other people that perhaps aren't ready to come out yet. Or I've had people come to me and say, you know, I want to come out, but I'm not, I'm not ready. My family aren't going to be accepting. They, they don't know how to react. And the best example, the best advice you can give someone sometimes is the personal stories of others. So this is a really powerful day for us as well. And this is less of a celebration about how we decorate the offices, but this is really more about how we get the employees involved and how we share their stories around. So our socials, this is one thing that we've been building up in Amsterdam for quite some time, where we have our monthly Be Proud socials on the second Friday of every month. Little plug there. Um, when Be Proud started, I remember it was about four people crammed into one of these tiny Dutch bars that had just a small little walkway, having a drink and a bit of all in together. And now as we've grown and we've, and we've kept the, um, continuous movement of these socials going, we have these every month and we really kind of drill the message behind them. So you can see some of the events that we've posted on the slide here where we also try and have an educational aspect around it as well as the social side of it so people can come together and kind of meet other LGBTQ people from around the company. When you start a company the size of booking, it can be a bit overwhelming. And sometimes you are kind of segregated to just meeting members of your team. And they can be completely different people to you. And you might get along with them perfectly, but you really crave sometimes to meet others from your community. So this gives such a good platform or such a good... Um, environment for people to come out come out of the offices we did that on purpose because we want to take this to an outside environment and for really people to be able to meet each other i've met so many amazing people from around booking at these socials and i think other people have one of our most recent ones the world aids day we had a social for world aids day and we did a fundraiser in and out the office where we created uh booking lanyards and they had our room for everyone be proud logo on and they had the um World AIDS Day ribbon, and we sold this and we donated all of the funds that we raised to AIDS Fund. So yes, it's a great night and we have a drink and a chat together, but we really want to have the purpose around them. Uh, you can also see on the bottom left-hand corner, we tried recently our first alternative social where we hosted a movie night 
But Yasmin and the team did an amazing job of turning one of the rooms and one of our offices into this adorable little cinema. And we had a huge screen and bean bags and we had a popcorn machine and everything. And yeah, it was really great. And as uh, we have the global reach, we're really trying to empower more of the different countries and regions to host these kind of socials. Because I think people get a bit underwhelmed when you get such a small turnout at the start. But it's something that you have to persevere with and see grow. So we've seen these start to happen throughout some of the countries in America. And it's something that we really want to start working towards again once the whole COVID-19 situation passes. Obviously, from the last few slides, you can tell that we love a little party and a celebration. We're going to focus now our efforts on knowledge sharing and education with our members and allies, which I will pass back to Yasmin to discuss. First of all, let me give a big shout out to Dita, the most heavy lifting on the movie night. <laughs> that's straight. I'm, I'm sure she's dialed in. Uh, no, but as Milo mentioned, um, even though the celebrations are great, uh, and I think they've brought us to where we are today, giving us such a great global reach, Recently, we discovered um, that we still get a lot of questions from people. Like, why do we celebrate Pride? Uh, why is there unicorns in the office? Why can't we have cupcakes every day? Um, and I think that really gave a signal to us that apparently maybe it's good to focus a little bit more on communicating, on awareness, um, not just um, focusing on certain aspects of the community, but also on the whole diversity I mean, as we all know, the, the whole community has so many different individuals in it um, that we realized maybe we should focus on this a bit more, which is why we recently started doing awareness campaigns. So a few examples are on the screen. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them. However, there's a, a few of them that I'd really like to um, yeah, give some special attention to. Um, I think International Stand Up to Bullying Day was a really great one where we um, tried to focus on the diversity in the community and also how accepting each other is the basic point where it all starts, right? We cannot ask other people to respect our community as a whole if we don't respect each other. And it sounds like a very simple message. I think it's a powerful one um, yeah, to sometimes focus on a little bit more. So we did something around that. Um, we also uh, did an HIV campaign around uh, USU, which is something that Milo is very passionate about, so initiated. Um, and also another one I'd like to focus on is our campaign around uh, trans-inclusive workplace. So on this one, we actually collaborated with a few people from the trans community within Booking, uh, and we made a video. Um, even more impressive if you know that this campaign was developed completely while we were all working from home, which made it a bit more challenging, but I think the outcome was something really beautiful. Um, and I'm also really happy that I can share this video with you all today. My name is Maigaska. Uh, my name is uh, JC. I'm Sunny. I'm from Bangkok, Thailand. For the first eight and a half, I've been known as Michelle. That means that only as of recently, I've been able to bring my true self to work. If I can be brutally honest, I will say yes. Personally, I feel comfortable in the workplace, knowing that my colleagues respect me. I feel like, okay, this is the place that I really want to come and work every day. The smooth process that I've had to go through, I would love for it to be available in other countries as well, and in other workplaces as well. I believe that there might be some person or some people that want to know more about us, and they might want to talk with us, and but they you know, hesitate to contact us or whatever, but please read out to us. If we share with your preferred pronouns and names, please use those. It means the world to us. If we are open-minded and willing to talk about things that seem confusing and allow people to be who they really are, we realize that the only difference between each other is our will to learn and develop as a human being. If you want to contribute to a safe work environment, please contribute by being open-minded, being respectful, and just treating others the same way that you would want to be treated. This is connect to, you know, to your colleagues and to chit-chat, to talk with them, sit down, grab a cup of coffee, or find some activity to do together, or you know, talking about your daily life, daily routine. So, you know, it's easy to become friends and just support each other and talk to each other.
Expand your horizon. When you show you're open-minded, a whole new world opens up for you. And happy Transgender Day! Thank you for watching! Wow. Still goosebumps. So, um, as I mentioned before, this whole uh, campaign was developed throughout the whole COVID-19 situation. Um, however, besides uh, the regular things that we've been focusing on the, the past few weeks and months, we've also been focusing on supporting our community. Um, I think we all know that now that we cannot be physically together, it's all the more important that you feel like you're part of a community, that you're part of a family, um, which is uh, why Facebook, again, comes in very, very handy for us. Uh, we've been using it to reach out to each other, um, which can be something as simple as maybe put on a post uh, asking people how their working from home situation looks like. Maybe a picture of your pet, maybe something about um, how do you uh, connect to your friends. We've been curating content online and offline. So you can think about maybe books to read. So let's be honest, now you have the time. Uh, Netflix series to binge on. We've done an amazing Spotify playlist. Milo, I'm not sure if we can share this outside of booking, but I think everybody should listen to this. Um, but also offering support, making sure that people know that they can connect with us. Even if maybe your friends are not available, your family is far away, um, you might be um, yeah, living in another country abroad. Sometimes you just need someone to talk to. And if that someone might be one of us, of course, why not? Let's do it. Um, this is also a greater initiative within Booking. But uh, this week, we also are hosting virtual coffee uh, dates where people can basically dial in to have a chat, just to connect, just to feel like you're yeah, still part of a family, uh, which is something I think is really, really important. So um, in the last slide, you can actually see that we hosted some be proud, virtual, socially distant uh, activities. We had our first pub quiz, which actually went fairly well, considering our few trials for it were a bit of a car crash, but it, it worked well. And we made sure that we had the social aspect of it where we were grouping colleagues together. So they were forming teams virtually wherever they were and joining a pub quiz as if we were just sitting in a bar together. And um, when the official booking events team saw us doing this, they approached us and they asked us to share this with the wider booking audience so everyone could participate. And as we mentioned before, like as an ERG, I'm sure anyone knows you are not an official business function. We all have our own delightful yet deeply stressful jobs that we're doing on a daily basis. And we're doing this completely on top of our own backs because we're passionate but we're also seen sometimes as an official business function. And we have people approaching us in the middle of the day saying, oh, I need this right now. And I'm like, oh, I have my own job. But I'll try and get it to you as quickly as possible. And yeah, that can add an extra layer of stress in it. But it's also amazing because we want to be part of the business. I think it's so important that an ERG stays organic, but they, they structure themselves so that they are officially part of it. And I wanted to take you through a few examples of how Be Proud have been involved in some uh, business initiatives so far. Um, I'm not sure how many of you know about the Travel Proud initiative that Booking will be bringing out soon, in which we will be offering our partners accredit accreditations to be inclusive accommodations. That was a mouthful of a sentence. To, um, to be in inclusive accommodations for LGBTQ plus travelers. This is meant to empower LGBTQ plus travelers all around the world to uh, experience frictionless travel. And be proud, we're heavily involved in this within the focus groups and helping to uh, shape the flow of some aspects of the project. And it was really interesting to see how they asked for our involvement. And it was an honor as well to be part of this. And it's something that's still going on. Uh, you can see on the left hand, we have the BAM 2020. So BAM is the booking annual meeting. And it's something that we do once a year where we take over the RAI Convention Center in Amsterdam. And we have a huge two-day conference where they have hundreds of different external internal speakers talking, and then we end it with a huge party. And last year, or what was this year actually? Seems like a long year since COVID happened. Um, but in January when we had BAM, uh, all of the ERGs were asked to participate. So we had a two-day booth because this is a, um event where we have booking colleagues from all around the world coming to and maybe people that don't get to be as exposed to be proud or the ERGs as much as they would like as as to those colleagues in Manchester. So uh, in Amsterdam, sorry. 
we had a two-day booth in which all the different ERGs were structured around and people could come and talk to us and we could kind of explain the reason for Be Proud and talk to them about how they can get involved. And that was really great. And we also had this amazing inflatable unicorn with a big backdrop that people could take pictures on. Um, but Yasmin and I also hosted a talk about the um, importance of having allies. And it was honestly, that was probably one of the proudest moments of my life when we did that because we talked on a stage to a huge room. I used to be absolutely terrified of public speaking, but we practiced it many times and we, we just wanted this story and this talk to have an important message. We didn't want it to just be us standing on a stage taking the spotlight, albeit we do enjoy the spotlight. We really wanted people to leave that room thinking, like thinking of a new perspective of why you should be an ally and, and what it's like to be LGBTQ in 2020. And we had a lot of feedback and a lot of people coming up to us afterwards and even beyond that messaging us on Workplace to talk about this. So for me, that that was a great honor and I'm really proud of us for doing that. I just promoted us and blew our own horn just for two minutes there, but that was a great day. Um, and I also previously talked about how an ERG constantly chases down members of the leadership team. So this year for Pride Day or Pride Week, as we've been allowed to do, we are hosting different themes throughout the week. So we have gender, ally, and we want to touch upon intersectionality. Um, and one of the call to actions that we want to initiate within Booking.com is that everyone should add their pronouns within their email signature. Now, we checked with all of the relevant systems and the teams, and we're allowed to make these changes but we wanted to start getting this creeping up and booking to have the conversation started before we actually brought this conversation to light and put out a call to action out there. So I've included a screenshot of one of our executive sponsors, Arian, who is the CMO, the chief marketing officer. And he, I, we asked him and he gladly put his pronouns in his email signature. And that is a huge win. So many people are going to see this. And I think that's a monumental moment for booking that people in and outside will see one of our key leadership members with their pronouns in their name. Um, not only that, we asked a few of the extended leadership team, so this is just below the board of directors, to add it in. And we already saw people asking, oh, why is there a pronoun there? Why, why do they have these in there? Which is exactly the reaction that we wanted to get from people. We wanted to just slip it out slowly and people would start to see it so that when it actually came around, there'd been some form of conversation and normalization around that. And it would kind of encourage people more to do this. Um, we are a global company, so it also has its benefits in, in a business aspect because we're constantly communicating with people. And sometimes you don't know the gender of that person. So even just to have this in there gives, gives you a good business leverage as well as helps to create our um, inclusive environment. Uh, another example, which I couldn't uh, put into an image here, is how... The marketing and copywriting teams will come to us and they ask us to review the copywriting guidelines just to ensure that everything that they're putting out to partners and that's customer facing is LGBT, LGBTQ plus inclusive. Um, and we love doing this. It's great that we, that they think about us, that we're the ones that they come to to actually have a look through it because I mean, I'm a native English speaker, but I think anyone that knows me will agree my English is terrible and I'm constantly misusing words and asking other people for help. So we're not copywriting specialists, but the fact that we're seen as someone that they can run this through is amazing. And we really appreciate that. And we really enjoy the collaboration between these business functions. So this is another good milestone for us in booking. And this is not about Be Proud. Be Proud has been here for five years. We're actually celebrating our fifth birthday this month. And um, we've been the only ERG for quite some time. And in just over the last year, we've had the introduction of three new ERGs within the company. So we have Be Able, which is for physically disabled and neurodiverse colleagues. We have Be Bold, which is empowering black employees at Booking.com. And we have Be Equal for women and people who identify as female in Booking.com. And these three ERGs are run by three amazing women who have been longtime members and allies of Be Proud. And they're absolutely incredible for the work that they've been doing. And it's so amazing to have three new ERGs that we, we all work so closely together. I am constantly learning things off them. We are all um, collaborating. We all share our ideas. We communicate frequently. You know, it, it's, it's such an uplift to each other. It, it's not a competition. We're not trying to beat each other because we all have the end goal here. 
we all want to achieve kind of the same culture and the same inclusiveness within booking. Um, we're not here specifically sometimes to talk about or LGBTQ people or black people, but it's more of like a gateway to minorities from our um, all of employees to the rest of the business. So it's a gateway into HR, into the leadership team, into diversity and inclusion team. It's it's a really great place to be. Um, recently in Booking, we've started to really focus on well-being, and we have Global Wellbeing Month this year. And last year, we had Global Wellbeing Week. And within that week, we had a whole day where we talked about social well-being. And myself and the three other chairs of the ERG sat down and did a panel talk that was live streamed to the rest of Booking about how being part of a community or being excluded from a community really affects your social well-being. So we're really trying to reach out to everyone in Booking. I think everyone can relate to something within one of these groups. And not only that, but we don't want to segregate one person as one specific minority. Like it really has a touch on that intersectionality approach here. Um, people might people might relate to every one of these groups, and we want to make sure that everyone kind of feels that they have the visibility within Booking.com. So it's really amazing to see the start of these three new ones, and I'm really excited to see what comes next for everyone. And with that, I think we've kind of talked about ourselves and blown our own horn now for the last 20 minutes. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too narcissistic for everyone. So we wanted to kind of share a few of the things that we have learned along the way because it hasn't always been easy for us and it, it is a lot of work that we're doing on top of our full-time jobs. So me and Yasmin are going to share a few of our learnings and hopefully a few tips and tricks that can help you all. <clears throat> so the first one is managing expectations. I love this quote. It's not a full-time job, but it is a full-time commitment. Every year we are, um, hire, I don't want to say hiring because we're not hiring, but we are bringing new ambassadors in to be proud. And we put the call out there and a lot of people do apply to be in this. And we get a huge amount of response. And I think a lot of people see be proud and they, they see the outside aspect of what happens and they want to join. And then they come and join the group and they very quickly realize that actually we have a lot of work that we have to do. We have a meeting every week from 6 till 7 p.m. We're doing kind of all of this stuff in our spare time. So it's not just fun and games and partying around. Like even just organizing one event takes a huge amount of work. So it's really about managing people's expectations and knowing what's to come. Every year we start off with about 15 people and we very quickly whittle down. Now there's just been the six of us working amazingly i would say for the past six or seven months and everyone knows what's expected of each other and we really rely on each other and we we help boost each other up but we're all working incredibly hard as well yeah and then following what ilo said yes this is not our full-time job and sometimes that's difficult however it's also a great thing that it's not our full-time job because that means we have another full-time job which gives us knowledge which gives us skills and which gives us most importantly a great network I think uh, I personally am a good example of this um, as being part of our office facility management team. Uh, my colleagues are literally the only people that are in every single office around the world, which is great if you need cupcakes ordered or if you need to organize an event. But it's also great if you need to get input from local offices uh, to hear a bit more about their local realities. So all in that, I think that is something that you really need to yeah, be smart about. Yeah. And I also think there's a there's a huge benefit of it not being your job because it means that we get away with a lot more that perhaps you wouldn't get away with as an official business function. So I remember having a conversation recently actually about the pronouns and the email signatures. And I thought it was fine to just steam ahead and said person was like, oh, we really should check before you move ahead with this. And I was like, oh, I've already asked. And then I said, let's just pretend we never had this conversation and I'll take the slap on the wrist if it comes around. Because we do have more of the organic flexibility to kind of be able to push these initiatives, which I think is the best part about an ERG sometimes. And that also means that change comes from both the bottom up and top down. I mean, we are not an official business function and we don't hold any power in the business. But what we do have is influence and a voice. And we can make a lot of noise about certain things and we have a big following that will back that up. And sometimes that's all you need to make change. And that change does come from the top once we're shouting down from the bottom. Yeah. Uh, another great one I think that we've learned over the last few weeks is focus on opportunities and not on limitations. So, for instance, this whole corona situation, yes, of course, it's a crisis and there's a lot going on in the world. 
However, it also brings yeah, great opportunities. First of all, I think we've seen what a, what a closely connected and resilient community we have, which is something that's great to focus on for once. Uh, but also uh, opportunities that it brings not to be physically together. So, for instance, the pop quiz that Milo mentioned, it might sound crazy, but even though I spent 50% of my, my time behind a laptop screen being in calls with people around the world, it never popped into my head to host something like a drinking thing or, or a, a game or an event online. And now that we had to do it, it turned out it works great. It's fun. You don't need to, to bike home afterwards through the rain. It's, it's awesome. So I think if you look at it from that perspective, every crisis situation uh, can, can bring a lot of opportunities. Another great one, I think, um, is that people often focus on, uh, yeah, do you have a lot of budget available for this? However, we've also seen that by leveraging your knowledge, your skills and your network, sometimes you get more creative if you start uh, hosting something without any money available. Yeah, I, I think some of the biggest things we've done, we haven't had any budget for at all. That The video for Transgender Day of Visibility was incredible. And it gives such such a good highlight for our community. And that costs nothing. Most of the educational sharing pieces that we do cost us nothing. And our monthly socials don't take any budget, apart from probably in our personal finances, spending too much in a bar, but we don't really... Way too much. <laughs> way too much but <laughs> uh, mostly on any business budget for these kind of things uh, another thing is global impact local relevance so i think this comes with a challenge for everyone that works for a global company is that we are based in places where it's accepted and it's open to be lgbtq plus but that's not the case for all of our employees around the world and there's different ways that you should uh, face certain opportunities and challenges in regards to this. So yes, we might host Pride Day every year, and yes, we do have a big celebration, but that doesn't mean that the communication style is exactly the same in every, in every office around the world. Um, we have three regional chairs, and the regional chair of APEC, Africa, and LATAM, he obviously is faced with the biggest challenge because these are the countries where it's least accepting. And he spends a lot of his time, you know, sharing these amazing articles and amazing things that he writes to, to educate people and raise awareness of certain issues. And that is incredible what he's doing. And that has way more of an impact perhaps than, our, than us covering an office in Amsterdam and unicorns. I'll be it, we love unicorns. <laughs> Yeah, another one, uh, I think that is really important if you actually want to have an impact as an ERG of, of any other organization for that matter, is you make sure you root yourself in the organization. It's quite easy to lose yourself in just being the like the gay glitter club that just comes together and has a drink. However, if you want to be taken seriously, if you want to make change, you need to make sure that you speak to the right people, that you are visible within the company, that you show that it's more than just a group that is there for each other but that they're actually, uh, it's a two-way street. And I think that's something that we've really learned over the years, that by being visible, um, we got a seat at the table. So we're not just there um, to fight for LGBT rights within the company, but also the company can come to us if they need advice or input uh, or support. Yeah, completely. And uh, finally, it's be ambitious, but know your limits. So every year... We sit down, we create our roadmap, we have all of these crazy wild ideas, we want to do everything possible, but we realise the scope of our capabilities between the amount of us and the time that we have on top of our normal jobs, how important it is to actually prioritise our key focuses. So we try and say these are three actual things that we want to see materialise before the end of the year, and this is what we can all channel our energy into. And then it's much easier to see three things come to fruition and with multiple smaller initiatives maybe around it, but really, really targeting yourself on three main, it doesn't have to be three, but we go for three, three main goals and seeing where we get to from there. I think it's really helped us knowing our limits and kind of channeling, channeling our energy into one place. Yeah. So, so far, uh, the talk that we prepared, um, I think we can now open it up for questions. We have uh, Mike behind the scenes that is uh, <laughs> curating <laughs> for us a little bit. So let me see. Mike, could you throw something in the chat that we can uh, respond to? Also, thanks, Janneke, for your congratulations. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. What is your approach to the countries that are not too open to LGBT plus communities? 
communications post, how do you include them? Milo, do you want to take that one or do you want me to? Yeah, of course. Um, so as we mentioned, we have Workplace. So this is an internal Facebook. So everything that we're posting here is instantly globally available. So the communications aren't specifically streamlined for certain places, but we do have our local groups as well, which is a bit more of a place where you would target specific areas, as I mentioned before, in APEC in Africa. Um, again, we changed the celebration style a little bit, but we really have this strong feeling that booking is an inclusive place. And this is something that you should live and breathe if you want to work for the company. So we don't want to completely change what we're doing anywhere because we want everyone to feel the same. We want you to come into the office and not even just know that, be proud of this, you can be yourself, but know that booking is also this company that you can come and feel included and valued within. Um, having said that, going forward, if we might change things a little bit. So if we're going to run these learning pathways, the impact of that in a country like America might not be exactly the same as it would be, per se, in Russia. So there are different ways to channel um specific initiatives but as main communications go i would say they they stay fairly streamlined does be proud have any activities in bangkok we, Milo, do you know the answer to that <coughs> i would assume so depends what you mean by specific activities so bangkok does have their own be proud group we have a number yeah, right? okay, cool. in bangkok yeah. they are uh, also participating in pride day pride week everything um, I don't believe that they've hosted their own social out there. We were looking to see which other countries in APAC, because Bangkok's one of our biggest sites, we can host a BKX in, as we had Singapore last year. Um, but yeah, there is a presence, definitely. I just, I don't think there is any specific activities, and it depends quite what you mean by activities at that point. But Bangkok is more than welcome to join the virtual quiz, because that's awesome. Yes, we might have to host it at a different time. Though. I think we did have, we hosted a virtual movie night and they joined very oh, late. Really? Yes. Amazing. Um, so let's see, another question. Uh, how has your leadership been involved in countries where it has been difficult to openly be LGBT plus at work? Uh, so there's various different things. I mean... Oh, I lost the question. Sorry, I was just reading it again. How has your leadership been involved in countries that have been difficult? So again, like I said before, Booking has the policy that we are an inclusive company and we have inclusive offices. And they say, if, if you don't feel this, then maybe it's not the best place for you to work. I mean, I remember when the Brunei situation arose and immediately everyone jumped onto the Be Proud page and was kind of highlighting it and saying that this is something that we should be specifically tackling. And straight away, the leadership team jumped in. And, you know, we kind of get the, uh, the arguments from both sides of this, because the leadership team was saying, we can't just immediately withdraw ourselves from Brunei, because A, that means that we have to withdraw ourselves from everywhere in the world, that it's uh, criminalized or illegal to be LGBTQ+. And also, it can have more of a negative effect to re completely remove yourself than to stay there and to try and make a change from the inside. So I can't answer specifically what the leadership team have been doing. I mean, Travel Proud will be a great example of this, about how we're making frictionless travel for LGBTQ travelers. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry, I can't give you as such a solid answer as you want, because we are still continuing to operate because it's better to keep the presence there because we can make more of a change. And especially when we're having Be Proud in the office, we can have more of a change there rather than just completely removing ourselves. Sorry, I don't think that was the best answer I could have given you. <laughs> I think I think it worked. I, didn't hear, I don't see any complaints on the chat, so <laughs> yes. let's keep it that way. Uh, <laughs> let's see, another question from Paul. Thank you for asking. Does booking have an equal benefits policy everywhere? Like pensions, health insurance, partnership benefits. Um, I see, do see positive uh, feedback on the chat, by the way, Milo. Okay, Good answer, great. according <laughs> to David. Um, well, I'm not 100% sure we can say that it's completely equal everywhere. Milo, do you know? This? It's not. It and depends I know that we're reviewing it. Yeah, it also depends what you mean by policy. Are you specifically talking about LGBTQ policy? And I don't. That it's 
and I don't like in HR and I don't know that much about policy. Yeah. Um, Especially I should in HR. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe I should leave this one for you. Um, but this was on our roadmap for this year that us as Be Proud wanted to start to review the policies and booking and to see where we can help or make some noise around what was lacking in there. Yeah. Um, and I know that in HR there's this, um, I think, task force, or they have a fancy name for it probably, um, that are focusing a lot on inclusion. Um, I know that one of the things they've been focusing on, which already is really great, is they reviewed our uh, internal documentation, handbooks, etc., on gender-neutral language, which is, I think, a great step forward. Um, they probably will also be reviewing policies uh, abroad. I think most of these things usually start in Amsterdam because yeah, we're the biggest here. Um, but I know at least I, I wouldn't say they're all equal everywhere. I do know that it's been worked on um, and a lot of work is being done currently. Yeah. I mean, also at some point, I think there are some uh, country legislations that don't make it possible to have completely equal benefits everywhere due to like in the UK, you don't have to buy health insurance, but in the Netherlands you do in America, it's completely different. So even getting to the most, the point of having the most basic things available globally is a challenge, let alone having this everywhere. But it, it's also something that is looked upon in a case by case basis, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Uh, another question from Ali is the virtual Pride, Pride stream. I love that name. Can we use that, Ali? <laughs> Pride stream. Is it going to be open outside of booking or would you be open to broadening it for an external audience? Um, I'm going to take that one and say we didn't think about it, but I'd love to. I think that's a great idea. Um, maybe we can even connect with Workplace Pride to do one for all members. I don't know, David, team. David says it sounds like a good idea. I think we should, uh, yeah, we should definitely work so. on that. The Pride yes. Stream. <laughs> oh, tips for higher turnaround. I think I saw this one here, Jerome, when we were talking about the socials. So tips for a higher turnaround is A, perseverance. Just keep going with yeah. it. Things start out big. You just have to keep keep doing them month on month. I think when people kind of see a regular pattern of them, it inclines people to join more. I know that all of us were like dragging our own teams. That doesn't have to just be um, promoted to the LGBTQ plus community. I'll be as for them. It's great to have a big audience there. So I'm always bringing friends and people along. It's just it's just a great evening for everyone to be at. So you just need to get the word out there and try and think of. Um, sometimes we have activities or we have like a meaning behind it. So something that kind of drums up a bit of interest. I know that we did a Friday the 13th one and people, oh, before, before, uh, COVID hit, which is the day that we all got sent to work from home, we were having a Friday the 13th social in which when people entered the bar, we made them pick out of a hat and they had to pick a truth or a dare or a trick or a treat. And then we were going to make them do something. So we try and keep it very interactive as well. And I think also uh, another very, very simple thing, but uh, we don't do it always, um, send out a calendar invite. A lot of people don't do this when they host an event, they will just post it uh, on the intranet or in our case on Facebook. Um, and it's great, but people don't keep track. So really send out calendar invites, this really helps. Yeah, that's a great idea. Great tip. Uh, let's see, Graham has a question. To what extent do your inclusive values show up with customers? For example, uh, LGBT-friendly hotels or travel advice available. Milo, you uh, touched upon Travel Proud before? Yeah, I think this is where Travel Proud really comes in because as far as I'm aware, I think we used to have a logo on an accommodation site that would show if it was inclusive, but it was optional for the accommodation to be able to put this on. And I generally... And I might be misquoting myself because I don't actually work for the accommodation aspect or the partner side, but I don't think that, I think that this was majority on gay hotels, whereas now Travel Proud comes in and it's the initiative where we ask every single partner and we give all of them the option to give all of their staff training and an accreditation for um, LGBTQ inclusiveness. So it's really about like the check-in process, for example, if you go as two men or two women and they ask you, do you want two single beds, like to get rid of that, to make it just so you have equality, the same as a man and a woman traveling or just anyone else, right? So it's really about training the staff rather than making it on the website. We want to make sure that people are feel inclusive, included when they are traveling, and then they know which hotels they can target from that. 
So you saw when we talked about Tribal Crowd, there was a little rainbow suitcase. If the accommodation takes this training and their staff take this training, once they get accredited, they will have the little suitcase on their accommodation page on the booking.com website. I think so. I think that was something that was thought of so that the um, receptionist that an accommodation could offer you and say like, we don't want it to be, I think from my understanding and when some of the focus groups that I entered was my perception was that I, as a gay traveler, don't target gay hotels. In fact, that's something I would stay away from, but I would also go somewhere that was inclusive to all. So in my opinion, like if I travel with friends or my sister or whoever, I want to go somewhere and they say, this is an amazing restaurant to try. This is a good walk. You can go on. This is a great bar. Um, and then also there'll, there'll be the additional layer of, well, this is great LGBTQ friendly places in the area. These are some bars you can try, perhaps as a bookstore, et cetera. So yeah, I think it's all being thought of. Grand. Well, we will take this opportunity to say thanks again for watching. And yeah, please send us any questions outside of this. I'm sure we can host our email addresses or our LinkedIn or something so we can all connect. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say if there's any more questions or anyone in the audience feels like they want to connect on something particular, uh, feel free to reach out to us on LinkedIn. Happy to chat. Thank you all. Thank you all. So thank you very much, uh, Milo and Jasmine. It's a very interesting, uplifting, and informative uh, story about uh, Be Proud and what Booking.com is doing with their uh, LGBT employee network. Thank you also to all of the participants who were able to join us today for this uh, webinar. Next week will be our fifth webinar in the Keeping Members Connected uh, series. And the topic will be the launching of the UN Standards of Conduct for LGBTI Business. It will be hosted by Graham Sparks, who's on the advisory board of Workplace Pride and who is the former head of diversity and inclusion for Shell. So we do hope you can join us next Wednesday, the 13th of May at uh, one o'clock. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.